Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you again for this day and thank you for your grace and mercy. I pray that you'll move me to the side that you may be heard and you may be seen and experienced. I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I feel like I need to reintroduce myself. I've been, I haven't been in here in a while. Uh, it's because of different vacations going on and other things, uh, but uh, I'm glad to be with you today. I, you know, last week was Pentecost. God, God sent, a, sent a, uh, Jesus, and Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit sends us. We don't talk about it much, but, but what follows, what follows uh, Pentecost is Trinity Sunday. We don't talk about the Trinity a whole lot. It gets us all messed up. Uh, it's hard to figure it out. It just sort of just, it just when you try to explain it, you know, water, uh, vapor, ice, or uh, use the tree trunk and, uh, and the branches and the fruit. And uh, St. Patrick used a, a, a shamrock. It had uh, one, uh, just one plant, but it had three leaves. And we've used different ways. There's a new book out. And it talks about the Trinity. Uh, it, it's called a divine dance. And you, you think about that. In Greek, the, the word Trinity um, uh, is, is, a, is a difficult word. It's put together by two different Greek words. And, and it, it means uh, to make room. To make room. And when you think about a dance, uh, you're, you're making room. You're, you're bringing others into your space. You're moving and, and those words mean movement they mean uh, change and and part of that dance is, is making room and I, I thought about that as um, as you you think about the Trinity God the Father and God the Son and God the Spirit they're making room for each other it's a continual giving and receiving of love it's a continual moving in a dance of of, of holy love where they're, they're, they're selfless and, and it's self-sacrifice. It's not trying to outdo one another. It's not trying to outperform one another. It's a give and a continual give and take. It, it's that Greek word agape or unconditional love. And in that love, in, you know, in a dance, and I don't care what kind of dance it is. Now, people do individual dances and, and that's wonderful and, and you can do that. But when you have a two people dancing or a group of people dancing, there's something beautiful when it's done well. When there's rhythm and harmony and melody and, and people are moving in the same place in the same way, there's something beautiful there that, that no one can take away. Now, I'm not talking about dancing with the stars. That's, well, oh, okay. And, uh, uh, but but it, it, there's something that, that's harmonic about that and, 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 uh, and special. And that's what I see in the holy dance of the Trinity. It's, it's a free flowing of love uh, that, that goes in between each, each, per, each person of the Trinity. And they invite, the Trinity invites us to be a part of that dance, to be a part of that holy dance, uh, to, to receive the love of God and to give that love of God, to enter into that dance and to give and to participate, to keep in step, to get the rhythm and the harmony and the melody that God is calling us to. There's great freedom in that. But these days, and it, I didn't say this in early service, it's not so different from Paul's day. Paul wrote, wrote in 1 Corinthians 6, 12 that, you know, you have the, the freedom to do whatever you want, but not really. There's this idea that you can do whatever you want and be whatever you want and live however you want and act however you want and it, you know, say whatever you want. It doesn't matter because you, you have the freedom, and you do. But you can't enter into the holy dance if, if it's only about you, if it's consuming you. You can be demanding, controlling, judgmental, jealous, bitter. You can be prejudiced and envious, but you're not entering into the holy dance. All that you have in that dance is me, myself, and I, and you have no room for anyone else. When you're in that dance, it's, a, it's all about who you are and what you need and what you want. There's no real joy because uh, it, it's all about what you have to have and what you need for your life. 
The holy dance that I'm talking about today, the dance that, that Paul talks about is that we need the other. We need to make room. We need to have that place where there is a free-flowing sense of giving and receiving of love. We're a free-flowing love. We, we need that other person into the dance. What I, I get amazed at is that we say, well, we, we welcome people into our dance oftentimes. Well, it's people just like us. And most of those people don't like to dance any other dance than what you're dancing. And what that dance often is is self, selfishness and pride. It's, it's a sense of supporting a, a prejudice that we may have or, or some anger that we have or some uh, political statement we want to make. But if you aren't part of our dance, then if you don't think like we think and act like we think and do what we do, then you don't have room in our dance. And how is that free-flowing love? How is that making room for the other? Participating in the holy dance. How is that being part of a Trinitarian love? Paul talks about about this idea of freedom. Martin Luther talked about it in Bonhoeffer. I want to show you a quote from Martin Luther. Here's what he says, and this is written, to, uh, this is written in the 1520s. It, its language is a little bit different, but a, a Christian is utterly free man or woman, Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is utterly d dutiful man or woman, servant of all, subject to all. Listen to what Diedrich Bonhoeffer wrote in the 1930s or 40s. In truth, freedom is the relationship between two persons. Being free means being free for the other. Because the other has bound me to him or her. Only in re relationship with the other am I free. I want you to hear that last part. Only in relationship with the other am I free. It's only when we invite others into the dance that we are truly free. It's only in those times that we understand what love really is. It's when we're bound to each other and we offer forgiveness and grace and, and selflessness and generosity. When, when we offer a, a, a sense of, of, of goodness and mercy to others, that's when the dance begins. That's when that part of that Holy Trinity dance that we experience. When you and I are not doing things for ourselves, but when we're bound to the other around us. Here's what Paul says. I want to read it to you. you you'll find it if you, there's a black Bible, if you have one uh, in your, uh, under your seats, if you want to look at it, it's, it's page eight, eight, uh, 877. Uh, we have them there for you. If you have your own Bible uh, and you're not sure where it is, uh, look in Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, go to Acts and then Romans, and 1 Corinthians shows up after Romans. So, um, if you want to look at it, I want to read to you a little bit of what Paul says uh, about that. Now, as you're looking that up, here's a couple of other things Paul says uh, about freedom and about love. If you look at uh, Galatians 5.1, Christ has set us free for freedom. And don't submit, to, stand firm and don't submit to the bondage of slavery again. In 5.13, he says this, you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only don't let this freedom be an opportunity to indulge selfish impulses, but serve each other through love. So let's look at 1 Corinthians for a second. If I speak in tongues of human beings and of angels, but don't have love, I'm a clanging gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and I know all the mysteries and everything else, and if I have such complete faith that I can move mountains but don't have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything that I have and hand my own body over to feel good about what I've done but don't have love, I receive no benefit, whatever. Trish, I'm going to skip down to verse 8, but I'm going to talk a minute before I do. We'll come back to the verse 4 through 7. What he's talking about is temporary. What he's talking about here is the temporary aspect of love. You can, you can make the greatest speech in the world and nobody will follow you if you don't have love. 
You can know all the things you know in the world and, and be impressive with your knowledge and use big words. If you don't have love, no one cares. You can talk about the love of Jesus and, and speak about it and even preach about it, but if you don't have love, nobody wants to follow. Love is not based on how productive you are or how successful you are or how gracious you are. Because that becomes all about you. And no one else has entered your dance. Love is more than just temporary. These are just acts that are temporary. It says, it's starting with verse 8, it says, For as prophecies they will be brought to an end, and as tongues they will stop. As for knowledge, it will be brought to an end. For we know it in part and... And, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, what is partial will be brought to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I reasoned like a child. I thought like a child. But now I've become a man. I put an end to childish things. And folks, I'm not sure that the body of Christ has caught that. I've got to be honest with you. I'm not sure that we, we, we read that far down because we like, we like the part, love is patient, love is kind. But we don't like to hear the part... Well, we often, it's the childish. You know what child, um, I thought about it the other day. Uh, a baby is the most selfish being that we have right now, right? They don't care what time it is that you, they want to be fed. If you're asleep, they don't care. They don't care if, the, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, you've had a long day. If their diaper needs to be changed, you're going to know it. They don't care if you're trying to, to listen to some TV show and you just need to rest for a minute. They don't care. They don't care. This is what I need. This is when I need it. And, and you better get it right now or I'm going to cry louder. I'm going to demand your attention. And it's not loving when we act childish in our relationships with our family. You better keep them soft. Don't say anything to make them mad because you know what happens when they get mad. And what we do is we're manipulating our family by showing them that we're going to get mad every time they say the wrong thing. Tread on thin ice around the guy at the workplace or this person at the workplace. You don't want to upset them. That's not love. That's the, the dance that you're making for yourself and everyone's watching you trying to avoid being stepped on by you. We do it well in church, too. Don't say the wrong way. Don't act the wrong way. Don't look the wrong way. Because you know what happens when they get upset. And what we do is that we enter into a dance that dissolves community instead of resolves and builds community. Resolves to build community. See, I, I think, in my humble opinion, that love is an attitude, it's a disposition, it's a choice. And we choose to be people of love. That's different from this feeling that Paul's just writing about a, a, an essay on love. He's saying this is a lifestyle you're choosing. This is a way of life you're choosing. Trish, you with me? Let's go back to verse 4, okay? It said, love is patient. Love is kind. It isn't jealous. It doesn't brag. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude. It doesn't seek its own advantage. And I told Ryan this morning, I had an aha moment. I just, it just, can you feel the joy in this? And the freedom in this? You don't have to go around being rude. You don't have to go around taking your own advantage. You don't have to go around being irritable. You don't have to go around keeping a record of complaints. How many, how many of y'all used to, well, high school dances, uh, it's been so long since I've been in high school. How many, how many of y'all have been, how many of y'all have been wallflowers? Uh, you know what a wallflower is at a dance? You just stand up against the wall, hope nobody notices. I was one of those people. I couldn't dance, I still can't dance. But I tell you what, it's real hard to dance 
when you, when you continue to carry around stuff on you and keep records of people that hurt you or made wrong about you or made false accusations about you or you're carrying around this bitter or this guilt. It's a, and, and the Lord of the dance talks about the devil on your back. It's hard to dance when you're carrying around this backpack full of stuff. Have you ever tried to dance with somebody that back, had a backpack on full of bricks? Every time they turn, they're going to hit you. And it's going to hurt. And we carry our stuff into the dance that causes pain and agony for others. How free is it? How joyful it is to be in rhythm and harmony with God. And God is saying, stay in step with me. And you'll learn how to be free from all this stuff. That's what Paul was saying. Come to experience the joy of the dance. Because it says here, it says that it, it isn't uh, happy with injustice, but it's happy with the truth. Love puts up with all things, trust in all things, hopes in all things, endures all things. Many of us aren't in the dance because we don't trust. Now, I don't trust you. I, don't, I think you'll step on me. I think you'll lead me off and won't, I can't be a partner with you and, and, and be in harmony with you. And so we miss the joy of the dance. I, I thought about, uh, how many of y'all are square dancers? Anybody a square dancer? You don't have to be ashamed of it. It's okay. That's good. It's a great dance. I was looking at a grass square dancer the other night and listening to what talk about it. And he said, he said you know, if you, if you fall out of rhythm and out of step, and, out of, and it's just true, you fall, you can get right back on. You don't have, to, you don't have to, uh, to wait for some call or something to happen. You can participate in the dance again. And that's what God does. God calls you and I into the dance, the holy dance of love. And so many of us miss it. We keep waiting and hoping and expecting things to be different. And they're not. You know, I, uh, I hope for Muncie over the next few months and the next years that you'll continue to be in the dance. There's such joy in this place. I uh, thought the other day, now I'm going to be here on June 17th, but it's like the dog and pony show. I'm going to be through for 10 minutes. I'm going to be in every service for about 10 minutes. So this will be my last official sermon in the journey. Uh, the, the other message will be about 10 minutes long, and I know that will upset you. Uh, <laughs> but I thank you for letting Judy and I be a part of the dance and welcome, welcome, welcoming Kylie in. I came to you, and I didn't ever say I was perfect. You found that out pretty quickly. But I didn't ever profess to be. But you've helped me become more in step and more in rhythm with, with the dance that God has set. And I, I'm i totally grateful for that. Uh, this call in the ministry, I want to say something to you all now. I know there's a streaming line, but I've already said this in the sanctuary. Bishop didn't call me in the ministry. I was called by God. And I'm trying to follow where God is leading. It wasn't, wasn't my choice. But I believe that God is amidst all this somewhere. And I don't understand it. And I know many of you don't. But I know this. That Muncie's a church that will also welcome the Reverend Carol Wilson into the dance. And will love her. And encourage her and say, here, we have room for you. Let's dance. And so as we, you're, you're going to, I told the sanctuary folks this week, I, I'm not much of a tearjerker sermon stuff at the end. I hope y'all are going to miss me. <laughs> I want to share your grief, but I also want to share in your joy. This is all about God. And the dance that we do together is the dance for God. I want to close with, a, with a, a, a little contemporary song. I'm not going to sing it, don't worry. 
but I want to use it as our prayer. And if, the, if folks want to come back up and get ready, gosh, I'm getting out here at 12, 15 or 12. What's up with that? Amen. <laughs> Don't worry, I have a few things to say afterwards, okay? Let's pray. He said, freely, freely, you have received. Freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, I come to you to share his love as he told me to. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit, amen. Well, this morning we are going to go out dancing. That will make more sense in just a few minutes. But before we do that, let's go out singing. I'm going to have you all be seated for a second. I'm going to take a senior pastor privilege. As you know, it is my last sermon here. So um, I haven't told you that before, have I? I was sitting and watching Danny, uh, uh, Michelle and I were talking, uh, Danny was, was singing and, and praising, and uh, she learned that in Vacation Bible School two years ago, and learned the worship, so I hope you'll have your kids invest in Vacation Bible School. One of the things I once said about me, I hope, at the end of my life, with the last breath that I breathe, is that I've entered into the holy dance more than I did a, a week before that or a day before that or the last breath before that. I want to be said that I've become more like Christ. And I think that's your desire too, to enter into that holy dance because God invites us into the holy dance. So I wanted to, we, we, did, we, didn't, we did plan this, so don't worry. Uh, but I wanted to invite you to see the melody and rhythm and joy. Now, some of you have no idea who Fred Astaire is and Ginger Rogers. You're going, who? But there's something about a, there's some, you, you all know, don't you? Yeah. Uh, but there's something about a, there's something a beautiful about a, a, a two people that are in rhythm and harmony together. There's something joyful. And I ask you to think about what God is inviting you to do and how God is inviting you into that holy dance too. Now, this will be the benediction. Nothing that's said after this. This is my gift to you today of the holy dance. Oh, uh, Miss Carroll, I want to show Mr. Gordon how much you've just taught me. No, never mind. Oh, thank you very much. That's very sweet of you. I'm, uh, Please. I'm very anxious for Mr. Gordon to see this because I think it's the most interesting experiment. Now, um, how did you say that last step went? Uh, uh, oh, yes. Uh, Shall we try it right through? Won't you sit down, Mr. Gordon? 